Hey, in this video, I'm going to start the introduction and walk around for the release of my uh, A1 Sky Raider. So the Sky Raider was uh, an aircraft that came out right after World War II. Uh, it saw action in Korea, Vietnam. Um, it had a very long-lived service history. Uh, they kept trying to replace it, and they were actually replacing the replacements before they finally stopped using the Sky Raider. I think they kept using them into the 70s. Um, it is a very large aircraft. Um, it's designed to be that way, as you can see. Um, its main uh, job was close air support. Um, they even one of its most uh, famous roles was the Sandy role, where during Vietnam, when they'd go to rescue downed pilots, uh, the Sandys, these uh, Sky Raiders, could get so slow that they could actually stay with the helicopters in formation. And the Sky Raiders would fly around while the helicopters were trying to rescue pilots and draw fire and uh, protect the helicopters as they were doing rescue missions. So starting on the port side here, um, we'll first look at the central tank. The central tank is our fuel pod. So this is the only place you can put a fuel pod and drain fuel. So the fuel will drain out of this connector. We have our next set of uh, hard points here in the middle. As I can see, as you can see, we have uh, a couple of my bombs there. We have uh, pretty accurate gear to the real aircraft. They rotate in the opposite direction of the real aircraft. The real aircraft had one of the doors in the front here, doors in the back, and it actually makes a nice little pod that the gear uh, sit in. The real Sky Raider had uh, four cannons in this position here, as we can see. Um, the only issue is with with Stormworks. Um, you know, I really wish the devs would kind of work on their scale a little bit. Um, you know, in real life, the magazines were probably about uh, one by four blocks for each gun. Um, if we had one by four magazines for the guns, um, you know, I'd be able to fit them in there without having to have uh, infinite uh, ammunition on. But we're going to need to have infinite ammunition to use these guns just because. You know, it's pretty impossible to plumb them in without destroying how the wings look. I would have to put a, uh, a magazine here. So hopefully they'll uh, put in some smaller magazines, of course, with, you know, uh, reduced ammunition capacity. But, uh, you know, for the size of a lot of these parts, they just don't fit properly. So uh, if you want to use the guns, you're going to have to have um, infinite uh, ammo on. So let's click that on, infinite ammo. All right, so the other thing I'm going to do is I'll do this while over here is uh, I'll take off vehicle damage and player damage just because um, we have some live uh, enemies out there and I don't want to just get shot out of the cockpit and have to start the video over again. So um, this is painted in the Air Force livery, the uh, camouflage livery. I'm also, uh, I finished it, but I'm going to make sure I repaint the most current version in the Navy livery. Even the Air Force livery, to my understanding, had folding wings. I think they just made one model, um, you know, one wing model, and then, uh, you know, all the branches had it that used the Sky Raider. So if we look at the uh, hard points out here, we have uh, four uh, bombs, and we have rocket pods. So this station here uh, is the only station that will fire rocket pods because you need the uh, logic to come through that particular hard point. So if you're going to put on rocket pods, that would be the one to do it. All right, so let's go back around the rear. So we have folding wings. We have, uh, these are not only flaps, these are flapperons. So these also work as ailerons. That helps with the folding wings to make sure that we have good um, control of the aircraft. We have dual um, ailerons on the wing, on the ex uh, external portion of the wing. Not only does that aid in, uh, in roll, but that uh, in the event that we were to get hit by gunfire and one of these ailerons was to be damaged, we could have even two because we have flap runs, ailerons be damaged, and we could still roll the aircraft and still continue to fly. So there are many versions of the uh, Sky Raider because of its long service history. And so one of the versions had a, uh, two seats in the rear here um, in this configuration. So let's jump in and we'll sit inside. So I haven't fit, flushed out any panels or anything in here. You know, I really don't intend this to be an actual usable space. But in the real Sky Raider, you know, there were two seats for a uh, crew in the back here. So they had some ground attack versions that had that. Later Sky Raiders even put in uh, dual side-by-side -side seats in the cockpit. So you have two seats in there. So that is accurate to the real aircraft. So, you know, um, this might look oversized. This is actually a one-to-one -one scale replica 
of the real aircraft. All dimensions should be within about one block of the real aircraft. You know, there might be some differences just like prop height and everything because of, uh, you know, store marks and how big the blocks are. The canopy is on the large side just because, again, uh, store marks, we have collisions with the seat, so that's a little bit tall there. We have a rescue arrow here for detailing. We have uh, a star there. There should be one up here, but um, I've not put that on. Right here is our fueling port, so if we uh, pipe in here, we can fuel the tanks. All right. Coming back around the rear here, we uh, have our tail and our uh, tail wheel steering. Uh, in the real Sky Raider, it would be right here, and it would actually retract, but, you know, the we'd have to use uh, modded parts, and they have to be very small, and then that would allow the hook to be in the back here. So, All right, uh, we also have another access door here for the uh, other side of that crew compartment. You can actually see I started putting in uh, a ammo belts in here, so you could manually load this ammo belt up, but you're not going to get many shots. Um, you know, ideally, I really would like devs to put in some better scaled uh, magazines that could fit within the wings. You know, a, a three-block wing is very thick, and you know it's almost a meter thick of wing for an airplane this size, and still can't really fit in magazines um, without them showing. You know, even if they built a magazine that had a paintable bottom on it. That would look much better. All right, so coming around the front here, we have our prop. The real um, Sky Raider had an 18-cylinder uh, radial. Um, I have a radial in there, but it's much larger so that it can simulate the power. Um, so in real life, you'd have cowl flaps here. These flaps would open and close uh, for engine cooling. Can't really do that, so this open area is intentional. As in the real aircraft, you'd have an open area here, and the cowl flaps would turn open there. You have two exhaust ports on either side. This is where the exhaust ports are um, in the real aircraft. They would actually leave um, soot trails down the back, down the side of the aircraft right there. The lower one would go up and over the wing, and then this one would leave a straight smudge along the wing. All right, so we'll go ahead and jump in the cockpit. All right, so jump in the cockpit. We'll stand on our seat, and if we look behind our seat, we have a parachute, so we can equip that. We have some more equipment, a fire extinguisher. We have a flare gun, flashlight, a uh, oxygen mask and binoculars. So the uh, oxygen mask is nice there. In the event that we were to crash land in the water, you can quickly grab your oxygen mask, open the canopy, and you'll be able to swim out and survive. Um, as we sit in the seat, you can see on the left there, it brings up what our seat controls are. So the one and two keys, as you can see, control our, um, our throttle. So that makes it nice and easy, so we can be looking ahead while we're flying and landing especially, and we can control our throttle. All right, so we'll start with the main panel, and we'll go around. We'll hide the seat controls. So these are Thales gauges. These are excellent, especially for uh, an aircraft of this vintage. We have our airspeed indicator, and it actually works out pretty perfectly. The real aircraft could go about 260 knots. This one uh, tops out around, I think, 230. Um, but Thales airspeed indicator goes all the way up to 220, so this is really nice for, um, you know, it fits well with this aircraft. We have an artificial horizon. We have a Thales vertical speed indicator. We have Thales altimeter. We have a compass ball. Uh, here we have our engine RPM and temperature. Here we have our fuel in gallons. That's 535 gallons. That is not counting that drop tank. That drop tank is separate. And it can be, it's displayed right here. You see fuel pod, 186 gallons. That's where the fuel pod is. So that's in addition to these 535 gallons. This is actually more fuel than the real airplane would hold. I think the real airplane was 385 gallons. Um, if our fuel goes below 50 gallons, we will get a blinking red light on the dash to indicate that we're low on fuel and we should go find a place to land. Right here we have our master power, so we can go ahead and click that on. As you can see, all of our gauges are backlit, and you can see our battery begins to drain. Here is our engine start-stop. Here is our battery charge-discharge. So this is going to show us, if it's a negative number, it's showing that we're losing battery. If it's a positive number, it shows we're charging the battery. Well, because the engine's not on and because we're not throttled up, um, we're not charging our battery. We're discharging. So. When you're on the ground idling, the um, the RPM of the engine is not going to be high enough to recharge the batteries. Uh, the 
generator is auto clutched so that it'll automatically maintain only the amount of clutch necessary to recharge the batteries that way you're not stealing power from the engine when you don't need to so again you know once we get flying and we have our rpms up we'll be making more than enough electricity to recharge if we go to the right of that we have our brake release and we have our brake indicator light so our brakes are on by default if we click that it will release our brakes and the light will go out Below that, we have our wing fold, so we can click that, and as you can see, the wings will fold and lock into place. We can raise them up again. Our closed canopy will slide our canopy. As you can see, nice closed canopy. Right here, we have our flaps down, so we have to hold our flaps down, and as you can see, they will uh, slowly go down. These are flapperons, so that means if we move our roll control, they also act as uh, ailerons. So wherever we put our flaps, whatever position, so this is max position, which is 25%. We can, uh, you can even see the one on the other side moving there. These also act as uh, ailerons. So those are flapperons. The next that we have our gear. So that will raise and lower our gear. Again, the tail wheel will not retract. All right, so coming over to the right side, we have our prop pitch. So if you look out at our prop, you can see we're moving the pitch of the prop. All right, so uh, I have this, you know, I'm a commercial pilot and I uh, have a degree in aeronautical science. And so we had to learn how to uh, fly complex aircraft during training. And so this is set up very much like a real aircraft would be. So your throttle, of course, is going to control how fast your engine is turning and your uh, prop pitch is going to change the pitch of the, of the blades. So um, I have some information here. So prop 10% is going to be for taxi and takeoff. All right. So as you can see, prop 10% TO slash land. So for takeoff and landing, we're going to want 10%. This is how you would um, operate a complex aircraft in real life. You want low pitch, high RPM when you're doing takeoffs and landings. That allows you to change the th uh, throttle settings very fast. So let's say you're coming in too slow and you need to jam in some throttle. If you had a lot of prop pitch, the engine wouldn't be able to respond fast enough to prevent a crash. So you want low pitch, high RPM. 50% um, prop pitch is going to be your max speed. So there's a trade-off where as you increase your blade angle, it's, giving, it's putting more workload on the engine. And so it's reducing the RPM. So at 50%, that's going to give us our max speed. So it's a good balance between prop pitch and the speed of the engine. At 100%, which is max endurance, you're going to be increasing the blade angle to maximum, which is going to put a lot of load on the engine, so you can't increase the RPM so much. So you're going to be going slower than max speed, but that's going to give you the most efficiency for your engine. So if you want your fuel to last a long time, you want to go to 100% uh, prop pitch. So the way I recommend moving these is, let's say we just took off. I'll actually show in the takeoff video, but we can use the one key. We'll push our throttle all the way forward, and we can just hold E, and we can actually do them at the same time if we wanted. So as you can see, I can hold and move these at the same time. All right, so let's reduce that. So for starting, which I should probably label there, I'll put it in the description. For starting, we want 0% prop, and the reason we want that is the engine will start if we have more than 0% prop, but at 0% prop, it's putting the least amount of load in the engine, and that's just going to allow us to start faster so that we're not having to wait forever. All right, so if we look at the starboard panel, we have our weapons uh, control panel for our starboard side. There's a couple gauges that are different on either side. So on our starboard side, we have our master arm. So we need three conditions to be fulfilled before we can fire or, or drop any weapons. We need to have the master arm on. We need to press our space bar, which is our trigger, and we need to select a weapon. So let's say I don't have my master arm on, and I select guns, and I press my space bar. Nothing happens. If I do master arm, select my guns, and press the space bar, we fire guns. All right. If I have master arm on, and I select station one on my starboard side, you can see that top bomb, that's station one. They count from outside, inside, one, two, three, four, five, and then six is in the, uh, I believe six is that bottom one there. And then we also have a central tank to drop our center store. All right, so the, the 
the benefit of this is let's say that we want to go in on one bombing run and let's say we want to blow up a hangar or a large tank, a large ship or something. We can select multiple uh, pieces of ordnance. So we could select one, two, three, uh, four. That's all of our bombs on that side. We could select uh, one, two, three, and four on this side, and that would be all of our bombs on that side. And when we press the space bar, all uh, eight of those bombs would drop at once. We could also select, you know, if we want to drop two at once or just one. You know, so this system allows us to drop as many or as few weapons as we wish. All right. So let's uh, continue down over here. So again, we showed guns. So that selects our guns. If that's on, guns will fire. All right. Again, we need infinite ammo on there. That's just, you know, limitation of Stormworks where, you know, with this type of aircraft, the magazines were in the wings. I think each cannon on the real aircraft would hold 200 rounds. And, you know, if you look at the diagram, they only would go from the back of the gun to about there in the real aircraft. So, you know, a lot of these pieces in Stormworks are just too big for realistic aircraft. So um, if you, you can you still use everything else with infinite ammo off, but if you want to use the guns, you're going to want to turn infinite ammo on. All right, so we had stations 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, and then over here we have rockets. So... As I was saying, um, you need that Station 5 is the only station that will allow you to shoot rockets. And that's because with the logic and storm marks, um, you know, I had to pick a, a hard point so that the logic could go through that hard point into those rocket launchers and fire them. If we selected Station 5 like this, we would just drop our rockets. So we don't want to do that. So if we select this, it will allow us to fire our rockets. All right, so we'll deselect that. If we come over here, we have our center station. Our center station is our fuel drop pod. All right, so once that fuel drop pod, as you can see, we have our, it shows us how many uh, gallons are in the fuel drop pod, 186. If we, uh, you know, say that gets down to zero, we burned off all of our drop pod, we can select the center station and drop it. Also, let's say we're doing a short mission and we just want to add another big bomb. That's a three by three. So I have not made one yet, but I'm going to make a 3x3 three three bomb for this. You could just trade out in the editor. You could select that fuel pod, delete it. You could select the bomb and put it in the hard point, and you could drop a bomb with that center station. Here we have our heater. So with uh, the heater on, that will turn on our heat so that we can, uh, you know, if we're at a high altitude or if we're up in the Arctic, that will allow us to uh, have some heat. All right, so uh, the control surfaces are pretty standard. Uh, S is pitch the nose up. W, pitch the nose down. There are elevators moving. We have left and right, our yaw and the um, tailwheel steering. We have our A and D for our roll. It moves both the ailerons and the flapperons, as described. All right, so that is the basics of the uh, A1 Sky Raider. Um, in the next video, we're going to go, we'll do a taxi out and we'll do takeoff procedures. With it being a tail dragger, takeoff procedures take a little bit of uh, finesse. All right, thank you for watching.